And a good morning. Looks like we have another very special day ahead when it comes to plenty of sunshine in the neighborhood. Uh, I'll get to the weather forecast for the weekend a little later in the program. Hey, look, into each and every life, a little rain must fall is the old line. And it will this weekend. But it'll be really nice on both sides of it. So if you actually have one of those shifts that you work Wednesday through Sunday, you're not even worried about that. 55 right now at our studio, seven minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you. Thank you for joining me today on Top Story. In about 20 minutes, we'll be joined by the good doctor and some of his staff from Trip Family Medicine. That's on the way in a short while right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. If you have a question or comment for the medical professionals today, here's an opportunity to get that question answered between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning on Better Health. Also coming up after the 9 o'clock hour, I believe Suzanne Hawkins is joining us from the Twin Falls City Council. We have revised the schedule with City Council and uh, we'll have a couple of things to talk with uh, to talk to her about this morning. By the way, if you had not yet heard that whole parking scheme, that backward parking thing, gone away. Uh, the, no one says it's a good idea at the moment. Hilarious letter in the newspaper the other day from a truck driver who's been out on the road driving a truck for a long, long time. And he couldn't even understand why. And he has a lot of experience backing up. He's been backing up more than most people have been driving. Finally, what I'd like to open up with today on Top Story is... Some of the reaction, we didn't get to this yesterday. Let's face it, it's a short show. There's a lot to talk about. Um, we have just, in, in the daily 24-hour news cycle anymore, and as the world just continually comes unglued and falls apart, there's so much to talk about, you just can't simply get to all of it. But I never got to mention, and I, and I heard Rush Limbaugh talking about it yesterday, and some other people have brought it up on some of the syndicated shows about Bruce Jenner. Well, you're not supposed to call him Bruce anymore. He, The man has gone through what you would call a very expensive transformation. He's 65 years old. He appeared on the cover of a magazine the other day uh, as a woman. Unfortunately, well, let me put it this way. A lot of people, even if they would like to make that change, can't afford the surgery that he got because he's, well, worth quite a bit of money. So he went, and by the way, whatever happened to that situation where he rear-ended the uh, driver of the other automobile and somebody was killed, I don't know that we've actually had that settled yet. But there is a, a tremendous amount of reaction culturally to this. Of course, the American left is talking about him being a brave and wonderful human being and because he had himself mutilated. But the American Civil Liberties Union, sometimes known as the Anti-Christian Licentious Union, or by the ACLU, the acronym much more uh, known, has reacted to all of this. This is from the Daily Caller. ACLU goes full fascist, tells people which pronouns to use for man-parted Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, why is this generating all of this attention? Again, we've got a country $18 trillion officially, officially in debt. It's obviously much more than that, considerably more. And we have a, we have a potential war brewing again in the Middle East. <laughs> I, I, can't we... Can't we just put aside all of this ridiculous? Well, anyway, in a directive by the organization's staff attorney, his name is Chase Strangio, we learned, the writer says, what is and is not acceptable regarding Caitlyn Jenner. Strangio says we must call her Caitlyn. The freedom-loving ACLU lawyer says calling Jenner by his birth name would be an act of hatred. He says it is indisputable this notion that calling one by his birth name in the trans world is the equivalent of promoting brutally violent acts on that person. Do you think that Bruce Jenner cares what I call him? If I call him Caitlin Goofball or Bruce, do you think that he really cares? I, I just don't. Gee, Bruce, there was a guy in Twin Falls, Idaho today who said, yeah, yeah, he's just not. So what, right? Bizarrely, the writer says, Strangio says, from here on out, we must not refer to her name used to be, or what her sex used to be, assigned at birth. By the way, the writer says, assigned by whom? The universe? Your fairy godmother by the doctor in the delivery room who pulls you out of your mother's womb? These are some questions, of course, that seriously probably should be answered by someone along the line. One of my favorite writers, I'm taking this on a much more serious note, a fellow by the name of Father Dwight Longenecker writes for a, a website called Pathios which is uh, devoted to various Christian causes, and it, it, it sweeps across various Christian denominations. He has, a, as I've mentioned before on the air, has a very fascinating background. He's currently a Roman Catholic priest. He used to be a priest in the Anglican Church, and before that, he had been 
an evangelical pastor in the deep south of the United States. So he's, he, he's gotten a taste of a lot of different Christian faiths, believe me, or at least denominations over the years. And he is a very straightforward writer. This is called Elastic and Plastic America. And he's referring to this Bruce slash Caitlyn Jenner. There was a lot of slashing going on in the operating room, obviously. Ouch. He writes, in the clinics, we have plastic surgeons who nip and tuck and fill and sculpt and suck and revise our bodies into new shapes and sizes. In the movies, we use CGI to recreate just about anything your imagination can summon up. Unfortunately, when we do, there is nothing left to imagine and imagination dies. In the magazines, every picture from the food advertising to the mouth-watering women are photoshopped to look better than they really are. They used to say a photo never lies, now it never tells the truth. Father Longnecker goes on to write, Drive down a typical American retail strip and everything is fake. Do you want Italian food? You can have the whole experience because, look, there's a fake Tuscan restaurant. Mexican? Welcome to the Adobe Brick Hacienda. You want German? You can do that, complete with beer steins and waitresses in those cute little journals. You want Australian? Welcome to the Australian-themed restaurant. Here's the Irish pub. There's the Indian Palace. When you think you've found authentic Americana, it turns out to be Cracker Barrel with country memorabilia pasted to the walls and a phony general store. Then he writes, perhaps I'm being harsh. But this lust for artificial buzz, the fake experience, and the stimulating crap is deeply demoralizing and the constant fakery we live with every day erodes our efforts at authenticity, genuine reality, honesty, and truth. Now I'm going to interject one of my own thoughts. This is not from Father Dwight. This is from Bill Colley. If people are so empty, especially if something along the lines of faith, then they're going to fill up their lives with all of this. Well, you can either have the, the truth of what is real, or you can have all of these pretend things. Father Longnecker goes on to write American Christianity, which should challenge the plastic elastic culture, bolsters and supports it instead. Television preachers with lifted arms and lifted faces preach a fake gospel of prosperity and pleasure. I think he means Austin. He goes on to write, Funny Priests Parade, a happy uh, clappy Coca-Cola religion in which everyone will be saved if only we can teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Hip-hop pastors fill their mega churches with a Christianity that is more entertainment than discipleship, while progressive pastors spot politically correct feel-good messages about promoting artificial inclusion and hot air-filled kindness. The fact of the matter is, he writes, the truth hurts, and genuine love and authenticity is hard work, and it requires listening, vulnerability, risk, and danger. <sighs> Again, you know, he, he's, a, he's been an award-winning blogger for quite some time in this country, but the majority of Americans don't even hear these messages anymore. In fact, you're not going to see him invited even on a conservative talk show. When you turn on your, your cable news at night and you're watching, you're watching, you have a number of choices. You've got, of course, Bloomberg and you've got... Uh, some places are carrying that Al Jazeera. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got that. You've got CNBC. You've got MSDNC. You've got CNN. You've got Fox Business. You've got Fox News. You would never see a guy like this get an opportunity to share these thoughts any longer. And and that's how far away we are from what was legitimate in this country just 50, 60 years ago. Also, Rush Limbaugh was talking about a story yesterday. And I'm not trying to uh, trying to use him as my show prep, although he jokes that's what we all do. But I happen to be sitting in here in the studio doing some editing after the program, and I overheard, because I don't often really get a chance to listen to some of the other shows, but he, he was mentioning that he had been reading a few years ago a story from a, from a researcher who had said that all of these people who are transgender are actually insane. They're suffering from a mental illness. And Rush says he hadn't been able to track down any more details about this since he first saw the story and mentioned it a few years ago. Well, here you go. Wall Street Journal this morning. Paul McHugh. Transgender surgery isn't the solution. Policymakers and media are doing no favors. He writes either, either to the public or the transgendered by treating their confusions. Their confusions as a right in need of defending rather than as a mental disorder that deserves understanding, treatment, and prevention. This intensely felt sense of being transgendered constitutes a mental disorder in two respects. The first is that the idea of sex misalignment is simply mistaken. It does not correspond with physical reality. The second is that it can lead to grim psychological outcomes. The transgendered 
suffer a disorder of assumption like those and other disorders familiar to psychiatrists. And then I jumped down the page a little bit, and he was talking about how some of these things can be resolved sometimes with just a bit of treatment. But on the third page at the bottom, it says, you won't hear it from those championing transgender equality, but controlled and follow-up studies reveal fundamental problems with this movement. When children who reported transgender feelings were tracked without medical or surgical treatment at both Vanderbilt University and London's Portman Clinic, four out of five of them spontaneously lost those feelings. They outgrew it. They simply, you know, there are sometimes boys you meet when they're little and they like to play with the girls' toys and hang out with the girls sometimes just as much. And uh, they may say, boy, I wish I was a girl. Well, you know, and actually they're probably just thinking, they're already starting to realize, hey, those are different and I like them. But the point of the matter is that's 80% don't even need treatment. They simply outgrow it. The other 20% apparently need some sort of treatment to break out of it. Now, I know the politically correct out there and the yammerers are all saying, no, this is not right. This is because, no, they, they can't control how they feel when they're born. Well, look, I've said it before. If you don't know what you are, get out of the shower some morning when you're not fully clothed, stand there and look in the mirror. Instantaneously, you will know whether you are a boy or a girl. You don't need anything more than that. That's all the proof you're ever going to need. And the one thing about Bruce Jenner, or whatever he's calling himself, he can't really go back and reverse this if he suddenly changes his mind. What he has done is <laughs> he's mutilated himself because of, well, according to this writer, because he's insane. And everyone is praising him for doing it, patting him on the back. Well, not everyone, but you realize in establishment media, then this is the type of story that is leading newscasts all over the country. Once more, we point out the country is drastically in debt. And a friend of mine sent me some surveys from uh, the St. Louis Federal Reserve today. The average media, or the median, being different than the average, the median income, household income in this country, has dropped over the last 16 years by $5,000 per household. Also, he sent me another figure. Over the last 20 years, the workforce participation among those people who are 25 or older with bachelor's degrees or more, that means advanced degrees, has dropped the whole 10%. These are serious issues about decline, but maybe we can't face the decline, which is why we sit here and we, we just focus on all of these circus sideshows. It, it's, it's a bit like the end of Rome, isn't it? When, when Rome was finally collapsing and it just went down in a hail of bacchanalia. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Science has not yet uncovered. And we're talking about, we're talking about whether it be transgender disorder or even homosexuality or people who prefer children. Or it has not uncovered any gene whatsoever that says that this is this is how they are quote born unquote. I've got more on this topic coming up in just a few minutes. Just a few minutes, we're going to see Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. He'll be joining me, Bill Colley, on Top Story for Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. Between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning, he's got a very interesting topic today, guy talk. In other words, uh, men are very reluctant often to go to the doctor. I heard a woman talking on a, on a call-in show a couple of years ago pointing out her husband was 58 and had never been to the doctor in his adult life. Now he's apparently been very lucky, too, as far as all of that goes. Uh, that's a, But you never know what could be ticking inside you. And, of course, some guys just like to tough it out. But Dr. Tripp says he's got a couple of better, better options. So hope, hopefully you can still join us in the next half hour as well. Remember, you can find Trip Family Medicine on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls, directly across from the main post office, and life's too short not to feel good. I have a telephone caller with us. First, let me give out a telephone number at 736-0300, 736-0300, and you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? What's on your mind? You are awesome. I love this show, um, but you're a terrible man, too. You want me to look at the mirror, look in the mirror at myself? My wife did that once, but she still has nightmares. <laughs> I try to avoid that too. That's the uh, the Michelin man looking back at me. Oh, I want to thank him for the call. Yeah, the Michelin man looking back at me. I never quite expected that. 
when I was still in my late 30s, I looked pretty good, and then all of a sudden it all went south at that point. You can reach this program today by calling us at 736-0300, 736-0300, and of course my email, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Uh, that last name would be spelled C-O-L-L-E-Y, and uh, hopefully you can uh, uh, get that. Well, even my critics have been able to spell the name lately, so that's that's a pretty good thing. They've been doing some commercials for me around the state of Idaho. Got a couple of other quick notes to make. Since we'll be talking about health in a few minutes, there is a story out in the Washington Post that says, you can just tell this is, uh, this is the liberal uh, world campaigning for a Supreme Court decision in favor of Obamacare, and if not, ready to attack, of course, people who might be opposed to it. The headline is, 6.4 million Americans could lose Obamacare subsidies, federal data show. Now, they're saying it's mainly going to happen in those states, or well, places like the Mountain West, where states did not set up their own health care exchanges. So that would be impacting red states. So number one, the inference they want you to make at the Washington Post is, red states controlled by Republicans are bad states because they're controlled by bad people. And 6.4 million people will lose their health care subsidies because they did not set up health care exchanges and follow the leader, uh, Barack Hussein Obama, uh, his all-enlightened being. Well, I was looking through this story, and about three paragraphs down, a very short paragraph, just one sentence, it says those subsidies amount to $1.7 billion, that's with a B, per month. So in the course of a year, we're actually looking at something around, what, $20 billion spent on subsidies. What is a subsidy? Can I go out in the backyard? Is there a tree growing out there? with these great big uh, things, uh, the, these fruits hanging from the tree, and if I just knock them down and break them open, there'll be a subsidy inside? Well, a subsidy is coming from the government now, isn't it? But the government doesn't actually have, it's, it's not like a corporation, it's not running its own factories and selling products, making things and, and the like. So where does the government get that money in order to give me the subsidy? Oh, they took it from my neighbor. I get it. Okay, so your neighbor... Uh, may actually end up with a few more dollars in his pocket that he can use to spend on things he might need. Food, for instance. Now, there's a quaint notion. He might even be able to go back to eating meat once a week. It's 828. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Speaking, we were talking earlier about people with psychological issues. Well, there's an AP story today here in Idaho. It says, psychiatrists are few and far between in Idaho's plentiful rural communities. Now, I can understand that. Uh, number one, in a small community, if you've only got a 500, 600-person population, a psychiatrist isn't going to see that many people just because of the sheer numbers. But it may also hint that the people in Idaho are more stable than they are elsewhere, which is probably why we have a red state instead of a blue state. In other words, we're not nuts, unlike, let's say, California, Oregon, and Washington. Officials say that telemedicine is helping the practice get a hand in treating faraway patients. So if you are living out there in the middle of nowhere and you do feel that perhaps you'd like to be a woman and you're a man, you might now be able to get the treatment that you have. Treating a patient over video or phone has been around for decades, but implementation has been gradual in Idaho. The nation's largest telemedicine provider cited regulatory issues for pulling out of the state nearly one year ago. To combat those challenges, lawmakers passed legislation this year requiring the state's medical licensing boards to develop rules for providing telemedicine in Idaho. So, more regulation. Dr. William Hazel, a Boise psychiatrist who practices telehealth, says he hopes the act will help raise awareness for both patients and doctors to expand the service in Idaho. We don't need a couch then. You don't have to go into the traditional psychiatrist's office, get on the couch, and start talking about all of the nasty things that I, my, my father didn't buy me a bicycle until I was 16. And, and I, I hated him for it. He made me walk everywhere I had to go. You can now do that over video, so you could just sit there with your cup of coffee at the kitchen table before you go to work in the morning. You can get psychoanalyzed, get out the door after a little bit of a coffee and an English muffin, and hey, you'll be fine. Dr. Jonathan Tripp coming up in just a moment. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio. There we go. 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 57 at our studios. Going to be a nice day today. 